Hello friends, I'm Dee, about to react to this vid. This is a different type of vid, uh, but it's called Don't Chase Happiness, Become Anti-Fragile. So this video has to do with uh, managing your emotions and whatnot. This is something that I'm personally interested in. Nobody asked for this video, I just wanted to watch it. So I'm like, hey, might as well watch it with y'all. You feel me? So that's what we're about to do. Um, we're, we're gonna watch it together. Let's see what they gotta say, let's watch. There are only two kinds of people <coughs> who do not experience painful emotions. The first kind so are sure the psychopaths. The second kind are dead. Oh. There is a false understanding or expectation that a happy life means being happy all the time. Mm -hmm. No, learning to accept and even embrace painful emotions is an important part of a happy life. And the study of painful emotions is an important part of the field of happiness studies. My name is Tal Ben Shahar. I'm a student and teacher in the field of happiness studies. And my most recent book is Happier No Matter What. Shannon's Club. We, we ain't reading it though, Tal. But thanks. There is a very important concept that was introduced by Nassim Taleb, and that is anti fragility. Anti fragility is essentially resilience 2.0. Resilience 1.0 is when we put pressure on a system after the pressure is lifted, that system goes back to its original form. Anti-fragility takes this idea a step further. You put pressure on a system, it actually grows bigger, stronger. We see anti-fragile systems all around us and within us. For example, our muscular system. We go to the gym and we lift weights. Mm -hmm. We're putting pressure on our muscles. What bigger. happens as a result? We actually grow stronger. We're an anti-fragile system. On the psychological level, you know what that's called? PTG, post-traumatic growth. Yes. So where post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, is about breaking down, post-traumatic growth is about growing stronger. As a result of pressure, stress, it's anti-fragility. The role of the science of happiness is to teach us what conditions we can put in place to increase the likelihood of growing from hardship. Now there is a paradox when it comes to pursuing happiness. On the one hand, we know that happiness is a good thing, whether in and of itself or as a means toward other ends. At the same time, we also know from research by Iris Moss and others that people who say <coughs> to themselves, happiness is important for me, I want to pursue it. Those individuals actually end up being Sorry. less happy. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're more likely to experience depression. So the paradox is that on the one hand, happiness is clearly a good thing. On the other hand, valuing it as a good thing is problematic. Yeah. So what do we do? The way to resolve this paradox is that we pursue happiness indirectly. Think about sunlight. So if I look mm -hmm. at the sun directly, it's going to hurt my eyes. However, if I break down sunlight into its elements, into its constituents, I can look at the colors of the rainbow. So I'm indirectly looking at the sunlight, enjoying it, savoring it. In the same way, pursuing happiness directly can cause more harm than good. But breaking it down into its elements can lead us to enjoy the indirect pursuit of happiness and by extension, to raise our overall levels of happiness. What are the metaphorical colors of the rainbow when it comes to happiness? Here we have what I've come to call the spire model, and it can trigger the anti-fragile system. SPIRE is an acronym that stands for spiritual, physical, intellectual, relational, and finally, emotional well-being. Mm. Spirituality is about finding a sense of meaning and purpose in life, at work and at home. If you wake up in the morning with a purpose, you're more likely to overcome barriers. 
When it comes to physical well-being, the most important idea to look at is stress, the silent killer. In the United States, more than half of the employees do not use up their vacation time. And even those that do, close to half are still tethered to their work. The problem is not the stress, it's the lack of recovery. Mm. With intellectual well-being, there's research showing that people who are curious, who ask questions, are not just happier, they also live longer. Another important element is not just asking questions, it's deeply engaging with material. It can be text, a work of art, even nature. Relational well-being is very important. The number one predictor of happiness is quality time we spend with people we care about and who care about us. And it turns out the number one condition that we can put in place to increase the likelihood of anti-fragility, of growing through hardship, is the quality of our relationships. Finally, emotional well-being. So embracing painful emotions is critical, but how do we then cultivate pleasurable ones? Specifically, the emotion of gratitude. Cicero talked about gratitude as the mother of all virtues. When we appreciate the good in our life, we have more of it. So happiness is much more than pleasure. Happiness is whole being. These five elements together create that sunlight, happiness. I don't think there is a point before which one is unhappy, after which one is happy. Rather, happiness resides on a continuum. It's a lifelong journey. And knowing that, we can have realistic rather than unrealistic expectations about what is possible. I do not think that things necessarily happen for the best. However, we can learn to make the best of things that happen. Yes, brother. I like that quote. I, I agree with it. Um, yeah, I feel like people are so hell-bent on chasing happiness, and you're really not going to acquire it that way. What I personally do is try to be in full acceptance of everything that happens in my life. I try to uh, obtain peace in that way, and it's really effective for me. I also try to stay detached from a lot of nonsense that goes on in the world. That's why I may seem um, insensitive or just like I live under a rock or whatever the case because it's just a lot of shit that I'm just like eh mm. it is what it is that's my motto in life I say that all the time because that's you know what I truly you know live by and it indirectly brings me lots of happiness because I am at peace and things don't affect me nearly as much so yeah there are a lot of different ways in finding joy and peace in life um you just have to find what works best for you but i feel like he made a lot of good points uh, being anti-fragile is really important if you're super fragile and super uh sensitive to everything that's going on in the news and the media and oh COVID this and if you're like super sensitive about everything that's happening around you you're not going to have any peace you're going to be anxious and depressed and all of that so um yeah those are my thoughts on the situation but it's a cool little video this is the type of shit that i watch so when i'm watching shit about kim kardashian and a fucking uh michael b jordan lloyd harvey or whatever and i'm out of the loop and i'm like what what's happening this is why because th this is the stuff i watch on my own time i watch the bullshit with y'all the shit that y'all want me to watch but this is the type of shit i watch on my own boring shit that nobody really want to watch people really probably not even gonna watch this video Bet this video will get very little views. But anyway, uh, I liked it. Y'all let me know what y'all thought, though. Let me know what the videos you'll be watching. I'll see y'all in the next one.